It is a team-centric approach to work, meaning that the team is the unit that turns ideas into deliverables. We love for teams to be high-performing and hyper-productive and, and just outright solid and reliable and good, but teams are, do not get that way spontaneously. They just don't. Uh, there are a few teams that do. Most teams and most companies, that's not in the cards for them. A leader will help them grow into that role. An Agile leader is a special case of a servant leader. A servant leader is there to help others grow, as opposed to just be accountable for getting the work done and for you know, showing the direction and all of that. An Agile leader does that and lives the Agile mindset. So the Agile leader is also flexible and adaptable and collaborative and communicates in a way that is more facilitative than telling. I believe the skills have to do with being a people person and a people person who helps others along. How does that happen? Through communication, getting your point across, working with resistance, having empathy, uh, having a clear purpose to interactions. Communication is the building block for the next, um, is one of the building blocks to the next skill, which is coaching, which is helping others grow through options and introspection and feedback. Feedback is another skill. How to give it in a way that people hear it and actually do something useful with it and the relationship remains intact. And ultimately there is facilitation, which is how to get team interactions to work out properly. Any leader has to deal with change. The first thing to do with change is understand where we're going to. Not so much the implementation yet, but what is the outcome that we're looking for? What is the vision for it? What, why are we even doing it? Once you have that, you can start talking about the path there. But that makes it sound like project management. What an Agile leader will do is consider the dynamics in the system, the, the human system, the various people you have on your team. They're not resources. They live and breathe and they have their own ideas and needs and wants and conflicts and baggage and a whole bunch of stuff. Coaching skills are important because uh, most people want to grow. In most situations where we employ people for knowledge work, we need them to grow. But we cannot tell them to grow. We cannot say, oh, you know, it's time you picked up this skill because we need it. Some people would agree, others would be not so happy about that. Coaching is where you have the other person realize the need for growth, figure out a target state, and figure out how to get there. You, in a coaching capacity, you don't have to be a full-time coach, but in a coaching capacity, you help them with the process of that growth by work, helping them work through options and understanding consequences and figuring out uh, what might be a challenge and if you have challenge, how to deal with it. Giving them feedback, having them uh, think through questions. Um, when you work with people in technology or people in any knowledge work, the change will have to come from them. The growth will have to come from them. What you do in, in a coaching capacity is help them with it. Just help them along, facilitate the process as opposed to impose it on them.